Villains are common in Disney movies, but some of them are worse than others. Stay tuned to see which villain is king or queen of them all. If you like crafts and DIYs, check out our friends at Crafty Hackers. They have this awesome video about ways you can recycle regular objects into toys. They'll show you how to turn your useless everyday items into amazing kids' toys. Make sure you check them out and be sure to leave them a like. Click in the corner to watch. New around here? Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to The Things for more great content like this. Now on to who is the most powerful Disney villain. Hans. Oh, Anna, if only there was someone out there who loved you. These dreadful words were spoken by a true jerk. I'm sure you remember Hans from Frozen. He is responsible for a huge plot twist that you probably didn't see coming. Him being a villain was a shock because we all saw him as a good guy. He had us fooled, thinking he loved Anna and liked finishing her sentences. Sadly, turns out Mr. Hans actually wanted Anna and her sister Elsa out of the way so he could be the ruler of Arendelle. Everyone believed he was the snow upstanding guy that was on his true love, a courageous prince. You know it hit you hard to see him turn into a monster, and we know violence is wrong, but Anna punching him square in the face deserves praise. Hans doesn't really have any magical powers, but he preyed on the vulnerability of two sisters, which is awful within itself. Despite the turmoil he caused, he's still a weakling. Here dog. Here. Here dog. Cruella de Vil. Her name alone means cruel devil, so don't expect Cruella de Vil to be a good Samaritan angel, even if her coats are nice. The fashionista is obsessed with herself and enjoys the luxuries of everything. Every single thing is expensive as possible and authentic. So what do you think her iconic furs are made of? Precious puppy's fur. Everybody has a soft spot for the little guy, especially when the little guys and girls are adorable puppies. Cruella is one of Disney's most disliked villains. Her actions are despicable. In the movie, she gets caught before her plan comes to fruition. If not, this film would not be suitable for anyone. Wicked Stepmother Cinderella's wicked stepmother didn't need any magical powers to torture her stepdaughter. All of her talents lie in her ability to psychologically and emotionally abuse the girl. Cinderella does nothing wrong to her stepmother other than being an orphan and a burden to her. We see her being treated like the help, a slave that is ordered to do chores until she can't take it anymore. Cinderella's stepsister and stepmother are practically drowning in expensive fabrics and jewelry. The girl has no family, no money, or social status, so she has to rely on that evil woman to earn her keep. Just the fact that Lady Tremaine is able to abuse and torture Cinderella for so many years without anyone paying attention or even caring shows that she has power. She forces her stepdaughter to live life without having any fun, showing her that her self-confidence should be non-existent. Seems we have time on our hands. But I was only trying to- Silence! In the real story, Lady Tremaine also makes her daughters cut off their own toes so they can fit into the infamous slipper. She has no magical powers, but tons of influence. Gaston as Gaston's character develops in Beauty and the Beast, we see that he is prideful with a huge ego and does not deal well with rejection. He is baffled at Belle's decision to turn down his marriage proposal and in return becomes violent. When we first meet Gaston, we just see that he's a narcissist who is only concerned with himself. That doesn't make him a villain, just annoying. We also need to point out that Belle has a lot of great qualities, but Gaston only sees her for being beautiful. He is determined to make her a trophy wife and tries to force the girl into an unhappy marriage. He locks her father away in a mental asylum after Belle goes missing. Along with locking her father away, Gaston tries to get rid of Belle's true love, Prince Adam. In the end, the Beast defeats Gaston. Gaston is pretty big and has alliances who will do the dirty work for him. Governor Ratcliffe He's racist towards the natives and is rather xenophobic. He refers to the natives as savages, which shows how entitled he and others are just from the color of their skin and how they live lavishly. It's true that Radcliffe knew things that Pocahontas and her tribe had no idea about, but he definitely would have not lasted one day in Jamestown had it not been westernized. Radcliffe creates a war that comes about from his greed for gold that doesn't even exist. Nevertheless, he continues to look for it with with no problem killing whoever or whatever is in his way. He's so awful that his dog Percy even leaves his side in the end. While his men do all the work, he just relaxes
boxes in a tent of luxury. His only real goal is to find gold and to live his life as a rich man. He uses his position to corrupt the system and get what he wants. He has no morals, which allows him to get away with practically anything easily. Claude Frollo If you haven't seen The Hunchback of Notre Dame, you probably wouldn't consider it the darkest movie in the Disney franchise. But oh, if you have, then you know how crazy sad this film is. Claude Frollo shuns Quasimodo from society after murdering his mother. He calls Quasimodo a monster all the time and tells him to be grateful for the solace of the cathedral because society would not treat him like a human being anyway because of his physical features. The sad part is that he isn't exactly wrong in telling Quasi this because the public does eventually make a fool out of him. Luckily, Esmeralda shows him kindness, but all that does is upset Frollo. Because of this, Frollo hunts her down, lusting after her, then deciding he's okay with hurting her after she denies his advances of marriage. He is so angry that he burns down the entire city to find her. This film shows themes of lust, green, and just pure evil. Frollo is similar to Ratcliffe in the way that he deals with abusing power to get what he wants. However, he governs a lot more people. Now all of China knows you're here. Perfect. Shen Yu. Just looking at Shan Yu from Mulan can instill fear in the bravest of us, even if he is animated. He's a threat because of his strength and military ranking. We see him hurt people in cold blood to show that he's no one to mess with. This message is sent to the opposing side to evoke fear and doubt. Men are shaking in their boots when he comes around because he is that powerful and scary. He escapes an avalanche basically untouched, and that definitely warrants some respect. But it's Mulan who stands up to him, and he treats her no different than he would fighting a man. Shan Yu doesn't care if Mulan is male or female, he still wants to hurt her. His superhuman strengths make him fit to survive an avalanche and cold climates. He is extremely tall and built, invoking fear in anyone willing to fight against him. Scar If you have watched The Lion King, there is no way you didn't tear up as Scar hurt his brother. Ask yourself if you've gotten over it. It's something that will get you every time you watch it. Scar is not only responsible for hurting the king to take to the throne, but he then convinces his nephew that he is responsible for his dad's passing. Full of guilt, Simba runs away and Scar has the throne of Pride Rock. With Scar as king, he basically ruins the once beautiful land and everything turns to dust. He lies to everyone about the death of Mufasa and why Simba has left. This causes the land to become abandoned with no sense of hope of revival. Scar has always had dark desires to rule over a kingdom where everyone pledges their loyalty to him. Scar admits that he was gifted with intelligence over Mufasa being given power and strength. His evil plans make him a powerful villain, hurting the king who is also your brother, and getting away with it untouched deserves recognition. Dr. Fasalir In the film The Princess and the Frog, Dr. Fasalir is a voodoo priest. He is oftentimes referred to as a charlatan or a faker, but hates being called that. You disrespect me, little man. I've got friends on the other side, he says. This is true. Based on Haitian voodoo culture, people in this position do actually talk to the dead through magic. This form of voodoo is seen in a lot of Hollywood films. Fasalir possesses powerful magic and is pretty good at using it. He is capable of accomplishing pretty much anything he can think of. His favorite trick deals with playing cards because he can manipulate them. He's basically a witch doctor who is also responsible for hurting Ray and turning Prince Naveen into a frog. Ursula. In order to marry a man she met a few days ago, Ariel, also known as the Little Mermaid, is ready to abandon her home, family, and friends. While this isn't the smartest decision to start with, Ursula still tricks Ariel into a horrific deal. Ariel thinks Ursula is her savior because she can give her what she wants, which is the ability to live on land and marry the prince, Eric. Many people would probably jump the thought of meeting their soulmate for a small fee, but the decision is just naive, and Ariel's super young. In return, Ursula captures Ariel's voice, but despite being voiceless, Ariel is still able to win Eric over with her beauty and personality. Ursula has magical powers, ones that can really only be used for evil. She deceives naive and innocent people with empty promises that only hurt them in the end. She's as good a liar as she is with her magical abilities. Even if she could use her powers for good, she probably wouldn't because where's the fun in that? Jafar Jafar is definitely a psychopath with a side of large ego. 
In Aladdin, he abuses his power as the royal vizier, all while hiding his evil desires for everyone he comes in contact with. He also has a parrot that he names after one of Shakespeare's most awful villains that is famous for his ability to lie and deceive. They are truly a perfect match. Throughout history, snakes are seen as evil and sneaky. Jafar turns himself into a snake and performs a lot of dark magic. He can hide from others with no issue and abuses his high authority position so that he can rule the kingdom by hurting the Sultan. His final mistake was turning himself into a genie, which was ultimately his doom. However, if Jafar were freed, it wouldn't be good for anyone. A psychopath indeed. The Evil Queen this evil queen in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is undoubtedly evil. Because she views Snow White as a threat, she hires a woodsman to cut her heart out. She could have definitely had her ship somewhere else, but instead, she decides to hurt Snow White. While Snow White is protected by her kindness and gains friends from the Seven Dwarves and woodland animals, the queen still uses magic to bring Snow White down. This evil queen has ruled her kingdom for years and has no problem hurting whoever she does not like. She uses a henchman to get rid of Snow White forever and magically traps people in inanimate objects. Not exactly a person you want to upset. Her bad side seems to end with people passing away. She does, however, give Snow White the option of chocolate over an apple when poisoning her, which should count for something, right? Let us leave our noble prince with these happy thoughts. Maleficent. With a name that literally means doing evil or harm, what can you expect from the lady? Maleficent targets a newborn baby, which is kind of harsh. The baby is known as Princess Aurora, and she receives a curse from good old Maleficent. On her 16th birthday, Aurora is set to fall into a deep sleep forever after her finger has been pricked by the spinning wheel. Maleficent is rejected by society and is determined to see this curse through after not being invited to Aurora's christening and decides to make the family anticipate the day of her passing away. Maleficent's power lies in her ability to put fear into the entire kingdom and what she is capable of magically. She is always angry and acts on her anger. She also can morph into a dragon. They should have sent her an invite. Chernabog Going back to the 40s for a Disney classic villain, if you aren't familiar with Chernabog, this villain comes from the 1940s Disney film Night on Bald Mountain. While this movie was probably before your time, this villain fits right in on this list. He is truly demonic and is based on Chernabog, a deity who went by the Black God. This villain is so powerful that many will argue that he is Disney's best representation of pure evil. This is because he chooses to be evil with no specific backstory, no jealousy, and no motive. Being evil is just what he likes to do. He wants only to devour and destroy. Chernabog has no goals but has servants fulfilling all of his desires. He also has no personality or weakness. Weaknesses. Evilness is a lifestyle for him. That's it for who is the most powerful Disney villain. Do you agree with our ranking? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.